Our previous lesson talked about implementing atomic long using the Java unsafe class. We're now going to talk about implementing Java atomic boolean. And of course, we're going to show how to do it using the var handle class. So now you'll get a more comprehensive view on how to use these different features. And the logic is very similar, just the, the, the type, types of the values are slightly different. So as you might expect, if atomic long was in a way of atomically doing operations on the long value, it should stand to reason that atomic boolean involves atomically updating a boolean value. Gee, no surprise there. So we're going to talk about that. And this particular implementation is going to show what's available in Java 9 and beyond. By the way, atomic long is also implemented much the same way as well, but I already showed you the unsafe version of that. So here's what it looks like with atomic boolean. And you can see the source code, by the way, at these links. If you click on them, you'll find the source code. So what's going on here is very similar to what we did with atomic long with the unsafe class. We're just using var handles here. So up here, you can see that we have a field called var handle. And we're going to go ahead and use this static initializer block to apply Java reflection. And it's going to go ahead and look up to find where the value field resides relative to the start of an atomic Boolean object. And it's going to take whatever it gets back there, and it's going to store it into something called a var handle. And it's going to do this by using, uh, it's going to say, go look in atomic Boolean, which is this class file, find the value field, and treat it as an int. That's what this is doing. And it's going to store it into a var handle that goes there. And if something goes wrong, we get a reflect, reflective operation exception. But hopefully nothing will ever go wrong in this case. Notice that the value field itself is volatile, which means that reads and writes to it are atomic. The implementation of the various methods we're about to look at use var handle methods for various atomic operations. So if you take a look at var handle, you can see it's an abstract class. And its methods are implemented as native methods, which means they're actually implemented in C++ or C or whatever. And you can see that there's um, a compare and set operation, which can take a variable number of arguments. And basically, the way it typically works is it'll atomically set the value of the variable to some new value if the variable's current value equals the expected value. And there's all kinds of wacky stuff because of <laughs> var, var uh, var args parameters, this thing called a witness value, blah, blah, blah. You'll see in a second, it's actually quite easy to use, but somewhat mysterious to try to explain. Likewise, there's some other operations here like get and set, which atomically sets the value of a variable to the new value and returns the various, the variable's previous value. That, that should be very similar to what you've seen before as well. And it also uses var args parameters. A var args in Java just means you can have multiple parameters. So let's take a look and see how compare and set is implemented in atomic boolean. And it, it actually looks very, very similar to what it looks like with the atomic long implementation, except now we're using var handle methods instead of using unsafe compare and swap long methods. So we say value, value is the var handle, dot compare and set. And we say, go ahead and compare this particular object and see if its new value is equal to the expected value. And if so, go ahead and set it to the right thing. And now check this out. This is really funky. So, so you notice that expected value and new value are Booleans, which means they're true or false. But we need to be able to use values here that are numbers, like compare and set, like 1 or 0. So what we say is, if expected value is true, pass in a 1, otherwise pass in a 0. If new value is true, pass in a 1, otherwise pass in a 0. Any questions about that? So we're just basically converting Booleans into numbers. And of course, as always, 0 is false and non-zero, in this case, we just choose 1, is going to be corresponding to true. And this will return true if we were able to successfully do a compare and swap. It'll return false if the expected value was not equal to the new value. Here's how we do, here's how atomic boolean implements set. You can see all it does is it just atomically sets the value of value to 
one if new value is true, otherwise to zero. So it, it unconditionally sets this to new value. And the key thing to note here is that this is a volatile, value is volatile, and therefore that write operation is atomic. Here's another call. In this case, we're going to use, this is the implementation of get and set for Booleans. We say var handle value dot get and set. That's a var handle method. This object, if the new value is true, set it to one, otherwise set it to zero. So that's get and set. We read the old value and we set it to the new value, either true or false. So that's the end of how to implement Java atomic Boolean using var handles. And you can see it's syntactically very, very similar to what was done with the Java unsafe class. It just is more in keeping with the Java type system, which is why it was added in Java 9. And now it's used exclusively throughout Java. They're, they're basically phasing out the unsafe stuff altogether.